Pathfinder has a slavery problem. Because of course it does. It's got a slavery problem, a racism problem, a sexism problem, a homophobia problem. It has literally every single problem in the book. You know why? Because Plaisov is currently under siege by ravaging hordes who want to, well, take away anything and everything that is within Paizo, everything and everything that is within Pathfinder, and turn it instead into yet another vehicle for their political agenda and their ideology. I can say this with such absolute stride and surety because the evidence is literally right in front of us. They started with the uh, the freelancer boycott of Paizo, which I covered a few months ago, where all of the various freelancers were not only seizing work, they were also actively withholding work that was already done for Paizo and Pathfinder's various modules and adventures, including Starfinder as well. Basically, they had Paizo by the balls and a knife to their throat on tops of it, since Paizo used a huge amount of freelancers because, as one of Paizo's own people explained, nobody wants to pay top dollar for this nonsense. <laughs> and so, they have to work with lower paid freelancers. And right here, we do have a freelancer who is penning this open letter to Erika Mona, one of the people working over at Paizo, making a demand of her. It's not just demanding an apology, that might not be enough, as he explains later, but that all slavery be removed instantaneously, with no explanation, no reason, no rationale, no nothing, just remove it out of the universe completely. Now, you will know that Paizo has fallen completely when they decide that our universe is a secondary concern to catering to, well, this kind of nonsense on the internet. And, incidentally, Eric Mona, the publisher at Paizo Inc., who states, Going forward, we plan to remove slavery from our game and setting completely. We will not be writing adventures to tell the story of how this happened. We will not be introducing an in-world event to facilitate this change. We're just going to move on from it, period. This is where we are with Games Workshop as well, where the creators of a setting care far less about the setting than they do about seeming virtuous to the internet. Games Workshop recently disavowed their own setting, their, the, the pillars, the cornerstone of their own universe to Virtue Signal. Paizo is doing the same thing. Now, what is interesting too is, apparently they had already written stuff like this in the past with a um, society scenario Assault on Absalom, where the players led to the abolition of slavery in one city by conscripting the enslaved people to fight a war and then giving freedom to the survivors. That sounds like a cool goddamn adventure, but of course, no, uh, it's not good enough. A way to trip forward over a very low bar, you see. Mm -hmm. Because the very existence of this is the problem. And here's the thing, too. Slavery is not unusual. God damn no. Now, we have eradicated it in most of the Western world. Britain and America gets a lot of the credit for that. France, too, incidentally. Uh, it did a lot of abolitionist nonsense under Napoleon and during the Revolution. Though nowhere near as enough as enough... Enough. E as much English, god damn it, as Great Britain, mind you. Here in the Western world, slavery is virtually eradicated. In Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East, it's business as usual, as it has been for virtually the entirety of human existence. The existence of slavery within a fantasy setting... It's literally just what you'd expect, frankly. In fact, the complete absence of slavery would, if anything, be weirder, really. But it is, of course, the current year, and so Pathfinder has a slavery problem. And this causes a great deal of mental anguish to black people, apparently. Very particular black people, I mind. I'm not going to put all black people beneath that very low bar, thank you very much. Well, we could get into a discussion about certain other slave trades in Europe, primarily done by, you know, the Turks or the Barbary Pirates, but details, details. Um, let's move on to the thing itself. 
I do feel the need to provide some additional information so that everyone can understand why it feels like such a betrayal. And to do that, I have to talk about Pathfinder Society organized play. So this is the core of the problem here. He complains about a Pathfinder release, Lost Omens Absalom, which is a 402 page tome, which includes references to slavery. Oh, nosies. And this is, of course, Eric Mona's personal responsibility as well, obviously. But Society Organized Plays, that is the official rule set, right? The If you go to one of their events, these are the rules you're going to be playing by. Often with people, they may know very well not to bury the lead until recently players in the public organized games were allowed to buy slaves. Correction, they were allowed to fantasize with their fantastical characters in a fantasy world played around a table with a gathering of other players of buying imaginary slaves on a piece of paper. If you're wondering how that happened, I doubt it's probably written in the rules somewhere, much like you can buy a horse or a cart or a castle or a house or a troglodyte, God only knows, or a pet. All of the other billions of things you can purchase in a fantasy universe on paper. It's pretty straightforward. Somewhere in some Pathfinder book, there were rule options that detailed the cost to purchase a slave. A perfectly legal practice in the fictional city of Absalom. Well, there you go. It's a legal practice in the universe. Certain Paizo employees decided which books are allowed for society, and the book with this option was one of the ones allowed. So any player with the access to that rule could then have their characters buy another human being. Correction. Once again, any person could here buy a fictional NPC in a fictional setting as a fictional addition to his character's loadout. It's not a human being, it's a piece of paper. Literally, it does not have feelings, it cannot be hurt by this. And because there was no rule to disallow it, the Game Master and other players at the table, to our table had no way to stop them. Well, you, you could just... Well, he does actually mention it, that they could agree not to. You know, you could be that obnoxious bastard who's like, Actually, uh, my personal, private beliefs say that you are not allowed to do this action because I believe that my opinions and my values in this fantasy game of ours are superior to yours. And if you don't agree with me, I'm just going to have to throw a hissy fit now, aren't I? <sighs> lovely, lovely. Obviously, a group of players mostly led by black voices. I hate... <laughs> God, I, I hate how the left dehumanizes themselves constantly. <laughs> like, black voices, black bodies. Like, you mean people, you mean other players, but never bloody mind. Chosen of the latter. The official response is, if players wanted slavery banned in organized players, then there had to be an in-game event that justified the abolition of slavery. As there should be. If you, in your fantasy setting, in your iteration of Pathfinder, want to abolish slavery, alright, you know what, that's a fantastic plot hook. Go do it. But no, we can't have that. What a hoop to jump through, right? Yes, you have to to play the game, or you could simply just enforce your one-sided will on the creator and literally everyone else that plays the game. You could do that, and as it turns out, you have the power to do that. You, Mr. Freelancer, have the ability to enforce your point of view on every single other actual human being who plays this video game. Not, not, not buying a human being, a, a piece of paper, a thing in a game, in a fantasy game. No, you get to enforce your will upon literally everyone else. What was your objection to slavery again? I must have missed that underneath all of the authoritarian waffle, frankly. <sighs> and now again, of course. <sighs> Thank you for posting this letter on behalf of the freelancer who sent to you. I appreciate the message contained within it. I will beg, I will grovel, I will get down on my knees, and I will acquiesce to your demands, Massa. For I am but a humble servant. <laughs> oh.
Fight against slavers, I have been stapled off the fantasy genre for decades, and originally conceived in the Pathfinder setting, so those elements were added to the setting to allow for that type of adventuring. In retrospect, that was a bad idea. A sort of original sin that continues to taint the setting for a lot of people. Inshallah, originals. <laughs> I tell you, Sargon was so far ahead of his time when he dubbed the SJW movements a literal religion. Love or hate the man, he was on point with that one. Original sin. And I want to point out too, a staple of the fantasy genre for decades was fighting against slavers. And the best point is too, that is the point here. This assault on Absalom thing is fighting against slavery. This is a world in which slavery is clearly perceived as bad, where slavers are evil. These are bad people doing bad things in a bad city. They are evil, but you can't have your villains doing bad things. No, 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 no. That might trigger someone with particularly sensitive sensibilities. No, instead, what we need is to strip all of the personality out of the setting, all of the character, all of the interesting, all of the intrigue, all of the actual villains, and just replace them with Saturday morning cartoons, threatening to take over the world, cackling maniacally, ah, 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 whilst never actually doing a damn single thing. Make them into the Decepticons, basically, who laugh, ah, 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 whilst they steal something and then go, I'll get you next time, as they flee the scene, as nobody dies, no permanent damage is done, or anything like that. Fantastic. See, again, this is why I like Homelander from The Boys, because he is a good old-fashioned villain. The man is a twisted psychopath on a hair trigger, and yet at the same time, too, he loves the adoration of the crowd. He loves being loved. He needs it. He desires it. And even, even when he is surrounded by people yelling at him, when he is pushed to the very edge of going full crazy, and he could slaughter a whole crowd of people in an instant, he still holds back and, and fights it down because at the end of the day, he actually loves that adoration more than he, than than his fear, more than his madness. Like he's a, he's evil as all hell. He's creepy as all hell, and he is a scary goddamn character. At least in season one, until they decided to emasculate and ruin him, like they do with all heroes these days. But this is the issue: we can't have good villains anymore because we can't have good settings anymore, and we can't have good settings anymore because the moment. Uno person cries on the internet, it all has to change and all of it needs to be removed unilaterally immediately. And people wondering why we get shit for entertainment these days. Oh well. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening. And if you like the video, as always, please do consider leaving a like and an arbitrary comment for the algorithm gods down in the comment section below. Till next time. Please have a good day.